Hello there guys, my name is Jay or Gimpy Dwarf and welcome back to another episode of the Space Engineers Spotlights. So, a few months ago we had a look at a first version of a factory design by a guy called Corin. And the world was the Corin Industries Automated Ship Factory version 1. Now, since then he has gone through, revisited his design and made even better with even more features. So I figured why not give this thing a good look-see and see what he's done to it because this thing got me so excited I actually went through and made my own that worked on an aircraft carrier of sorts and it did work pretty well and I really want to see how this works and maybe take a few ideas from it. Now we'll start wandering around and showing off some of the features but just to let you guys know that this thing will work in survival so if you do want to put your own ships in and you know be able to mass produce your own small ships or well only small ships at the moment however a large ship one would be amazing but um yeah if you want to go through and produce your own small ships you can he does have some tutorials on his workshop page on this build page and he shows you how to customize it and add your own crafts to the 3d printing element so we start on this platform like we did the last time and this platform is here purely to drop off goods and material that you're going to need when it comes to making the ships over here we go down these staircases down here and what we have what we are greeted with is a like a viewing gallery and what this space key enables us to do is it enables us to see what components we have within the station what the cost of the ship is in terms of materials and resources and what items we are missing from our in from our inventory to manufacture the ship and this is absolutely amazing use of scripting because this makes everything so much easier for the user because it, it streamlines it all, enables you to see what exactly you need rather than faffing about you know, going over to the blocks and saying, oh, I need radio components or something. It's really, really intuitive and awesome. And if we actually cycle through some of the ships, we will actually get different figures. So this updates according to what button we press. And as you can see, the numbers are changing, and it's really, really amazing. You're going to hear that a lot, because this thing really does show absolute immense work and awesomeness. But uh, yes, yeah, so we've got a vast amount of ships in here, and these are just the holograms from the projectors. And we have a welding and grinding craft. We have like a fighter craft. We have a drilling platform. Um, is this just like a little drony sort of personnel? Oh no, it's a rocket ship. Okay, it's a rocket craft. Then we've got another fighter that's very, very weird, but very large in size. We've got another fighter, which I believe I built this one on the last video, which is quite cool. Um, it's got a lot of guns on the front. And then we've got a cargo carrier, maybe? I'm guessing that's a cargo carrier. Now, Notice all of these crafts have this little flute on. This actually is part of the build process and what this will do is when you build a craft in say survival, what will happen is it will allow it like when it's built, it will hook up to the ship and feed it resources that it requires. So if it requires uranium, it will pull that from the station, put it into the craft so you've got power when you get the ship so you can fly off with it so this craft we have a lot of resources for and we can build it and we I think we just have just enough in all fairness so we need 30 we've got 30 and one forward. I think he's put exactly enough in to build a mining ship just so you can get started so what we'll do is we'll press buy now what this does is it takes the craft and brings it over there weirdly enough okay that is that is pretty damn sweet and we're gonna follow this through the process Brings down two arms with some lights so you can see what's going on. Welds it, which will be a lot slower in survival, of course. It gives it a few seconds and does what it does. I think it's actually missed an arm there, or maybe it will do it when it moves outwards again. I don't know. We give it a few, see what happens. Okay, so it is getting the outside ones now, that's cool. So it does go slower on the way back. So what I think what he's done there is he's actually 
increase the speed when it moves in and has like a bunch of timer blocks that turn it off and decrease it at certain points. That's really cool. And look at how everything's moving as well. This bit is my favorite part. I mean, what happens here is this thing goes onto like a moving platform in which this then pushes it outwards. Now this moving platform will detach the ship for you and free it of anything, of any constraints and let you fly off with it. And this is like just, honestly, it's beautiful to watch. So check this out. So it will stop, grind itself off and know that that flute is now detached. And then that just moves back again and goes back into its casing and just stays there. I mean, I'm going to get inside here and just have a fly around and a bit of a mosey about. And he even has motion sensored lights so we can alter things. These buttons tell you to alter the stuff on the carousel and start and finish stuff as it says there. But he does allow for a lot of customization with this craft as well. So you can put your own ships in. You could probably put modded crafts in as well. I, don't, I haven't heard anything about the modded crafts, but I'm guessing being as they just require components as a like, it, it will just work normally as it has just. It's a really, really nice design. I'm just going to see what's around the back, actually, and see if we can... Uh, that's maintenance access down there. I like how he adds all that sort of stuff in. It's really nice. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's kept the same look and sort of the same design, except the carousel is now slightly further back because of this entrance way that he's got coming through the... I think it's an entrance way? No, it's glass. But either way, it's like... It's a bit further back than the other one. And uh, it's a lot more streamlined. There's less you have to do. And, and again, this ship is now fully functional and fully flyable. And do we have any stuff in our reactors? Where are the reactors at? Small reactors. Um, inventory. Yeah, there we go. So it's actually put some re some refined uranium in these crates. This thing is ridiculous. And just to show that it works, we're flying around in it. That is, uh, I like this so much. Uh, it's it's nice to see these things being built. Cause they're very, very complicated and very useful. Because imagine trying to, if you could condense this down into just one flyable craft that could print off ships that would be really cool I know it's probably already been done but I've never tried it and I think I may try it in all fairness in the future so that has been the Corin Industries automated ship factory version 2 I think he's done really well there is one last thing to say that this thing does have a like a, a junk area so what this will do is it will enable you to junk a ship now, those are motion sensors, so can we fly a craft in here? Wow, look at that as well. He's even got the pistons moving it in and out like... Oh, God. God damn it. So, what we'll do is we'll actually take this ship and see what happens down there. And see if, if it just turns itself on or not. It may do, it may not. Nobody knows. Until you try, right? So, let's... Let's go. What happens here? No? Do we, do we drop it in and, and see what happens? Maybe? We do that? Does it like crush? I don't know. Where's the control panel for this beast? Here it is. So has this got different gravity to everywhere else? Yes, it has. So the buttons we've got here are disassembler, start, and disassembler, finish. So we want to start. It closes the door. That's a door. I never noticed that. And starts going to town. And this just moves gradually inward to grow in the ship and make sure it doesn't get pushed too far back. But it's got the landing gears there to protect it anyway. Wow. Holy crap, this is cool. I think that's what the sensors are for. It senses when it can move further down. And then it does. So rather than just flooring it into the ship and pushing it around, it does actually take into account where... The ship is in relation. I actually think this is its own ship as well. Is it? Oh no, I think we may have broke it. I think we may have encountered a little bit of a bug with this. It it can it starts and just doesn't want to continue. However, the sensors are are okay. They're all not picking up anything, so they shouldn't be moving forwards. 
That is weird. Either way, you get the idea with that. It's meant to move down as the ship disappears and eventually it will, you know, eat the ship up. All those resources go back into production and it makes a very easy platform when it works. So, bugs aside and weirdness aside, this is the Corin Industries factory and it's freaking insane. What you can do with vanilla Minecraft with the touch of a few mods is absolutely remarkable and I will leave you guys to play around with this now. I'll give you the link in the description to where you can find it on the workshop. If you do need any more information, go and check out Corin's videos. He does two videos, one about customization and one about how it just generally works. And hopefully you guys have enjoyed the video. If you have, please like, favorite, and of course subscribe for more. And I will see you guys in the next episode of Space Engineers. Peace!